And welcome back to Atreyu News. Tuesday afternoon. More from Red State Watcher. Breaking Supreme Court to take up major case and it could change the U.S. forever. A little typo there. U.S. Supreme Court is going to take up a case that will decide if non-citizens have constitutional rights. From Life Z. The Supremes... The, bleh, the Supreme Court on Tuesday is taking up a case that presents a critical question of law. Can a U.S. law enforcement officer be sued in American courts for the death of a foreigner outside the United States? Short answer, no. Hell no. For most of American history, the answer to that question has been a clear and emphatic no. Courts for two centuries have held that constitutional rights do not apply to foreigners with no voluntary connection to the United States. That the High Court even agreed to take Hernandez v. Mesa cast doubt on that long-held understanding of the law, however. That has been under a lot of pressure and challenge recently. Fordham University School of Law professors Andrew Kent told reporters on a conference call last week. All this is, is an idea, an old idea made new, to get rid of our borders and flood the entire country. That's all this is. The people that stand opposed to a sovereign nation are the same people getting paid well to destroy their own countries. Remember that. The Supreme Court opened the door to a possible revision with a 2008 ruling that held that prisoners at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, detention facility, had a right to petition the U.S. courts even though Gitmo is on foreign soil and the detainees were foreigners who never had been to the United States. Attorneys for the family of Sergio Hernandez quote liberally from that cast. Boumediene v. Bush in their written legal arguments. U.S. Border Patrol agents worry a decision in favor of the plaintiffs would make it harder for them to do their jobs, and legal scholars speculate that it could, depending on how expensive the language in the opinion is, impact immigration more generally. The facts of the case are unusual and in dispute. The plaintiffs contend that Hernandez, who was 15 at the time in 2010, was playing a game with some friends that involved running up to a fence at the top of an embankment in front of a culvert that separates Mexico from the United States between El Paso, Texas, and uh, I have no idea what that is, Sudad, a rock-throwing smuggler. Attorneys for the Border Patrol officer Jesus Jr. alleged that Hernandez was a smuggler who twice had been arrested in the United States but allowed to return to Mexico because of his age. Well, that makes more sense. You want to make it seem like someone was playing on a fence and just fell into America? Give me a break. These people are criminals. And the higher percentage of them we have, the worse it's going to get. We have to stop the courts in their tracks. And now, for the first time in a long time, we have a shot at doing so shocking. CIA agent resides because of Trump and his explanation is bad. Former agent Edward Price resigned because of Trump daring to question the intelligence agencies. Video is at the bottom. From Zero Hedge, Edward Price worked at the CIA from 2006 until this month, most recently as the spokesman for National Security Council. But as he details below in a letter published by the Washington Post, he has officially resigned. To be clear, my decision had nothing to do with politics, seemingly because the Trump administration is turning out the intelligence professionals. Nearly 15 years ago, I informed my skeptical father that I was pursuing a job with the Central Intelligence Agency. Among his many concerns was that others would never believe I had resigned from the agency when I sought my next job. Once CIA, always CIA, he said, but that didn't give him pause. This would wouldn't be just my first real job, I thought, then. It would be my career. That changed when I formally resigned last week. Despite working proudly for the Republican and Democratic presidents, I reluctantly concluded that I cannot give in good faith serve this administration as an intelligence professional. Give me a break. He got paid off to resign. Same thing with all these people. I was an analyst uh, with the CIA. Uh, I held different positions with the agency, uh, most recently as the spokesperson for the National Security Council. Obviously, I can't speak for the entire Central Intelligence Agency workforce, 
Uh, I do keep in touch uh, with some of them, and I can say that there is a strong feeling of demoralization. One of the culminating events was President Trump's uh, visit to CIA headquarters on his first full day in office. I am so behind you, and I know maybe sometimes you haven't gotten the backing that you've wanted, and you're going to get so much backing. It turned into a campaign-style event. The reason you're my first stop is that, as you know, I have a running war with the media. They are among the most dishonest human beings on earth. With so the president true. standing before uh, a memorial to CIA's fallen officers, going back into campaign mode. Uh, and I think for many uh, officers of the CIA, sort of certainly myself included, like I, um, that was a truly demoralizing moment and certainly one that I never expected to see. Well, I wouldn't argue with the notion that every president brings his own people with him. That is the prerogative of the president of the United States. What I think is different and unique about this president and his team is the unwillingness of those new members, many of whom have little or no experience in the foreign policy realm, their inclination to tune out the intelligence analysis that has been presented by them by career professionals. Well, let's just get this straight. He's upset because Trump showed up at the CIA headquarters. Why? He said he went back into campaign mode as if what Trump was saying is not true. And then if the intelligence community gets demonized, who do they really have to thank for that? Look what's happened under their watch. And judging on this guy's logic, I would say that it is he himself that lacks the experience to really see past his own nose. Professionals who have worked both for Republicans and for Democrats. I worked proudly under President George W. Bush. I worked proudly under President Barack Obama. I So he worked proudly under Bush and Obama. Both were warmongers, both expanded the federal government twice, doubled the national debt, and he was happy to work under these people. Think about that. And yet he'll resign under Trump, who has made the stock market by default raise higher than it's ever been, brought back more jobs, and from what I understand, small businesses have not seen a boom like this in 30 years saw how both administrations under which I've worked have valued that input from the intelligence agency. Granted, it's not the only input. They, both of them showed, I think, healthy skepticism, um, but they certainly welcomed that as one input into the process. It's absolutely healthy to be skeptical of not only the intelligence community, but of all voices that are around the table. And that's exactly why uh, there is a round table in the Situation Room. Uh, principals um, from various departments and agencies, from the Department of State, Department of Defense, from various entities of the intelligence community, uh, the military, and others sit around a table and debate policy options. And CIA uh, and the broader intelligence community typically uh, withdraw when it comes to policy discussions. They present the options, they present the intelligence, they uh, occasionally present uh, a recommendation, but then it's really a policy discussion. Something fishy about this guy. I would not be surprised if he got paid very well to resign and say all this crap. And realistically, if a person was given $5 million, then what really would you have to worry about? Of course they're going to resign any job that they have. If you never had to show up again, why would you? Makes sense. I'm guessing he's probably on George Soros' payroll, if I had to guess. Veteran has a new term for anti-Trump liberals. I remember that night when I saw the beta males and confused females in the audience crying. That was awesome. Post-election stress disorder. Vets take issue with a new term for upset liberals. <laughs> Let's take a listen. Well, I think, you know, number one, there was a big missed opportunity in, in naming it post-election stress disorder. I would have preferred them name it post-inauguration stress disorder. That way they could have called it pissed. And uh, there's a big <laughs> difference between being pissed off about things and what happens on the battlefield. And I, and I mean that. You know, I have empathy for maybe the stress that is, that's in people's lives as a result of this election. But that doesn't mean that there's any real comparison <laughs> to service members that have been targeted by snipers, that have been blown up, that have had to take the lives of, of their enemies, that have had their uniforms stained by the blood of their friends, or have had to bury friends year after year after year, sure. have been on deployments year after year. There's not a comparison between the two, in my opinion. That's hilarious.